In this video, we're going to be swatching out the blues and the greens from the new Roman Schmoll color range. We are going to be covering the Crest Cobalt Blue, the Cobalt Blue Deep, the Cobalt Sea Blue, the Sap Green Light and the Perilene Green Deep. First up, we have the Aquarius Cobalt Blue and I'm also going to be showing you the cobalt blue colors that are already there they have a lot of very similar blue colors already to choose from i would say that the closest one is cobalt cerulean blue it does have that cerulean looking hue to it it's it's a more opaque little bit yellowy kind of color it's heavily granulating especially in the mid-tone and it's pretty good at creating a good gradation and you do have quite i would say this is a medium range in terms of value from how dark it gets in the mass tone to how pale blue it can get it's made with pb72 which is cobalt zinc illuminate blue I would say this is halfway between a cerulean blue and ultramarine blue in terms of hue, looking at all the other blues that they have. It's classified as a semi-opaque colour. I would agree with that. There's a lot of deposits here. It is medium staining. Yes, there is some deposit and I'm not sure if it's going to come up on the video. I would say this is pretty low staining. It's not non-staining. Yes, there's some deposits, but it's pretty, pretty low. In terms of glazing, you do see some unevenness and that's not surprising because it is a low staining color. You are going to have that problem with uneven glazing. In terms of color mixes, the tinting strength is pretty high. It puts up really well with these high intensity colors like the quins and the thalos. And you get a beautiful strong green, bright green with a blue granulation when you mix it with aurelian. And you get a rose of ultramarine, like a softer version happening with the queen rose. And then not so much difference with the thalo blue just because it's the same color and the granulation is the same color as the thalo blue so you don't really see much difference then we have the cobalt blue deep which is a lot more transparent and you can see that just by a side by side comparison you see more of the white coming through and even though they're both classified as semi-opaque you definitely see way less deposit on here than you do on here so it is a more what i would call it a clear color as in it's less opaque the hue is pretty close to what i would call an ultramarine blue but let's have a look at other colors available from roman small yeah i would say it is a very ultramarine bluey kind of color i think these probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference if i didn't know which was which which means if you already have ultramarine on your palette or at least in your collection and i think most people have ultramarine blue in their collection then you probably don't need to get a cobalt blue deep because i don't really see much difference i know that the roma small ones the ultramarine blues aren't quite heavily granulating well, this is clearly, clearly, hugely granulating. It's like granulating Zara's and you can get amazing, amazing texture. The only difference between this and the ultramarine and you really have to squint to notice and you have to be really sensitive to color in the first place is that in the mid tone, there is this pale blue that is more of a yellowy blue happening. So it is slightly two-tone. It is made with PB74, which is cobalt zinc silicate blue. So it is a single pigment. It just has this yellowy blue happening in the mid-tone. As I said, with the transparency, it is definitely semi-transparent at most. I do see some deposit, but nowhere near as much as the Carrarius cobalt blue. In terms of staining, this is medium staining, kind of agree with that which means i do have to agree with aquarius cobalt blue being medium staining as well it's lightly staining in terms of glazing 
it's not very good at it. You see very clear color difference between here and here. How I do these glazes is that I draw a rectangle outline and then I fill the whole thing. And that's to see if the paint from the bottom layer lifts up in that time. And that's why I do it this way. In terms of color mixes, pretty similar to the Aquarius Cobalt Blue, but less intense. It's similar in tinting strengths, but the granulation, you definitely see more here than here. It is a much more powerful granulation. This is way more subtle texture and a softer texture. Then we have the Cobalt Sea Blue, which is a beautiful beautiful color i know that there's going to be a lot of you who are like this is an amazing color that i've been looking for it is a very intense tropical sea blue it is such a stunning color the mass tone is just beautiful just so that you know that already do do a cobalt teal color which is this color which was okay it's also a very transparent color However, the cobalt sea blue is a lot more intense, a lot more tropical. There's a little bit more blue happening in it. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous color. It is made with PB28, which is just your simple cobalt blue. Huge amount of granulation happening in the mid-tone, especially up here rather than down here. So not the mass tone, add a little bit water and then you'll get a nice granulation happening you do lose the color quite fast after that and you don't get huge amount of control beyond the midpoint there's not much difference between here and here so it might not be the easiest one to get a gradation happening exactly how you like it but it is as you can see also pretty good at doing gradation on its own it is classified as semi-transparent. I would agree with that. It is very similar in transparency to the Aquarius, Aquarius Cobalt Blue. It's classified as medium staining. Again, this is very, very low staining. There's, there's only a tiny bit of deposit still left. And because it is only lightly staining and it's granulating, it's, it sucks at doing glazing. Don't buy this color to do glazes with. In terms of color mixes, I have to say, out of these three, it has the finest uh, granulation happening. The texture is much finer. Between these three, the Aquarius Cobalt Blue is the most intense in texture. Middle one is the Cobalt Blue Deep and then the Cobalt Sea Blue. However, this is so beautiful as a texture and it's a lot more even than the Cobalt Blue Deep. All three of them, I would say, is pretty similar in tinting strengths. So pick between these three, depending on how intense a granulation you want happening, but also in the hue because Cobalt Sea Blue is just such a beautiful colour. Then we have the Sap Green Light. This again is a stunning color and let's see if we can find the original Sap Green here. So this was is the original Sap Green and this is Sap Green Light. It's, a, it's definitely a lot more olivey than the Sap Green. It's much closer, in fact it's pretty much the same as the Hooker's Green, just a little bit lighter and maybe if you squint a little bit more you know but it's pretty much i would say these mass tones are pretty similar so if you already have the hookers green from their range then you definitely don't need a sap green light whereas if you have the sap green but you want something more olivey then sap green light would be great it is made with py110 which is iso indonesian yellow and pg7 which is thalo green blue shade i really like this color but that's because i quite like hookers green in my palette i find them really useful color it doesn't do gradation very well it's not good at water control you get a big mass tone here and there should at least be a clear stage here which there kind of is but the mid tone is 
not very easy to control and you so you get mass tone this big band of mid-tone and then all of a sudden very pale tone very light tone here it is classified as medium granulating and i would agree with that you see a lot of granulation happening in the mass tone probably more than anywhere else there's a tiny bit of very fine granulation happening here on the higher mid tone but it's most obvious in the mass tone in terms of transparency it's classified as semi-transparent and i would actually say this is pretty transparent there's not much deposit here, but you can take a good look at these test sheets over on my Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash autocarno. It's classified as medium staining. And again, this is very low staining. I don't think Roman Small has a low staining option. So any color that stains even a little bit gets called a medium staining. But because it's such a low staining color, it does a bad job with the glazing so don't buy this color for doing lots of glazes with when you mix this color with certainly these three colors you get wonderful wonderful colors you get a very fresh green happening with cerulean a nice woody brown color happening that is warm with the queen rose and then you get that evergreen kind of green with sailor blue this is why i really like hooker's green and this kind of green is that it's such a versatile color for painting landscapes with and trees and soil and branches with that are unified because what's happening is when you mix sap green light with all these colors the sap green light becomes the mother color and it, there's a little bit on each color which harmonizes the color so i definitely would think that this is a great color to choose for mother color and i'd be very interested in testing out color mixes the entire color wheel to see how this behaves and then finally, we have the Perining Green Deep. And this is made with PBK32, which is actually Perining Black. And as far as I'm aware, this is the only commercially available PBK32 watercolor. So if you're like me and you love trying new pigments, then I highly, highly recommend this color because it's fun color, it's beautiful color, and Romish Mall currently is the only brand you can get PBK32 from. This color kind of reminds me of Noddy seaweed, you know, the sheet seaweed that you get to use in sushi. It's almost black but it's got that green undertone happening you get great range of value you get nice nice deep color to this very pale but also beautiful color and i think this is the first color in this video certainly where you get four clear stages of value for the gradation which is great because it means you're going to have full control of creating gradation in exactly the places you want it to it is classified as semi-transparent but i would pretty much say it's transparent i can there are some deposits but it's very very minimal it is classified as non-granulating which is interesting because i would say that this is quite granulating certainly in the mass tone in terms of staining it's medium staining and i would say yes it's medium staining in terms of color mixes you get gorgeous gorgeous colors with this color with the radian you get this oh lovely lovely like a light matcha green color with the queen rose it turns the queen rose into a nice dusky pink old rose color then with the theta blue you get this deep turquoise dark blue color i would say again this would probably be another good color to investigate in terms of how it mixes with other colors on your palette that's it for this video uh, looking at the blues and the greens from the new Roma small range do let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite in terms of my favorites i adore the cobalt sea blue it's such a beautiful color it's such a bright blue cobalty turquoisey color it's mm, lovely and then I'd be very, very interested in trying out the sap green light and the perining green deep for mother colors and see how they behave. Thank you so much for watching this video. In the next video, we are going to be looking at the brands from this new range of colors. So I will see you in the next video. Bye.